Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me or not, um, but we're going to give this a try. Caroline, do me a favor and take the mouse and click the little circle right there um, on the bottom. On the very bottom, the dark circle on the bottom list. On the, bot on the bottom of the day, you go that one. Alright, so yeah, people can hear me, which is good. So go ahead and click back to the other one. That one and the one next to it. And the one next to it. Sweet! Alright. Yeah, cargo shorts, baby. Okay, um, quick introductions because everybody knows. Yeah, we're trying. Um, we, we had a storm front earlier this morning. So right now we're looking at winds out of the north at about 20 to 25 kilometers an hour, which is always great. I had to put a windshield up to keep everything from getting blown around. I'm going to show you guys the, um, the bowling section here in a few seconds, um, and we're going to do our best. Okay, so essentially today we're going to be bowling crawfish. I've got helpers today. I've got Caroline. Everybody knows who Caroline is. She'll be helping us out at the end of the stream. She's got to go to dance rehearsal right now, and she's awfully pissed. Awfully cold. Oh well. This is Megan. Everybody knows Megan from all of our falling in reverse reactions and pretty much anything we're involved with. She looks at me like I'm a dumbass. She's she's also going to be operating as camera person because camera girl is fairly offensive. And um, okay, camera woman. Um, I don't get. I know. Also, um, later on at the end of the stream. We will be having a crawfish peeling contest between her, this guy here, all right? Her, come on over. Everyone, this is Olivia. Y'all know Olivia. She's my second daughter. My number one second daughter. That's how we work on that. She will be doing nothing in the stream but watching and critiquing me as I do whatever I do. Probably. All right. So let's get started. First of all, we have about um, 55 pounds of crawfish to uh, boil today. Um, we're going to work through the stream very simply. We're going to start at the beginning. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do all of our prep work. I'm going to walk it step by step through the boiling process, through the prep process. We're going to get it all done. Oh yeah, we're about to see some crap. So let's get our water set up. now. To boil crawfish, you're going to need a few things, and I'm going to show you a couple things you're going to need. Number one, you're going to need crawfish, and I would say that for the most time, for the most, really, you guys are nuts in the, in the, in the chat, by. So check this out. Um, the way this is going to work is, um, I'm going to show you guys the pot real quick. Where's the ice bath at? Uh, in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark. I don't have that here. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys the pot we use. I use a, a 35 gallon um, stainless steel with a stainless steel cage. This is the caging I use. Of course, you guys will recognize it as iron plate grate. Um, it's heavy stuff. I mean, it's what we use here. So um, we're going to use that. I'm going to point the camera over. Actually, Megan's going to point the camera over to where where we have the burner set up. The burner is going right now. It's another reason why everything is so loud out here. Go ahead and turn. If you stand in front of the screen, it does nothing. But, okay, so she's going to turn the camera right now over to the... Got to turn the camera itself. Turn the, ca turn the camera on the top. Oh. Yeah, the camera moves, yeah. She's going to turn the camera eventually. Okay, there we go. Let me... Uh, let me all right, so everyone sees that we have the pot over in the distance. Um, it's a stock pot. I have it about 35 to 40 percent full of water. It's just straight water. I don't have anything in it yet. We're going to talk about what we put on there. Uh, the two sacks of crawfish are the two green things you see there. I have a purging bin, which is the large ice chest that many of you saw me get spa treatments in about three months ago. So there you go. And uh, we have a cleaning basket. So I'm going to start right now. You guys talk amongst yourself. Megan and I are going to go over there. We're going to take the crawfish out of the sack, put them into the washing basket, and we're going to start purging them.
Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so what Megan's doing right now is Megan is doing what's called a purge. And what we're going to do is, since they're alive, purging is very, very simple. Um, we put them in a container, okay, usually an ice chest. We're going to fill that ice chest up with water, but we're going to let the water run at an angle for approximately 20 minutes. The running water should make them pretty much poop as much as possible. Once, while we're doing that, we're going to talk about prep. So I'm going to let Megan keep doing that. And then, um, Olivia, could you help me with my camera? All I need you to just point the camera towards me, please. General direction. Okay. I'm going to straighten it up just a little bit this way. All right. I think that's good. Let's wait and see what it looks like. Okay. Stand by. Good job. I think we're... Yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about our boiling water. Now, before we boil crawfish, we're gonna boil the, the vegetables. Now, when I say vegetables, I also mean other things as well, okay? Now, we're gonna do potatoes. Now, for me, you can use either yellow or red. Some people are so set in their ways that you gotta use red potatoes, that's fine. For me, as long as they're really small. I like them as small as possible. If a potato is fairly large, I'm not really into it. So, but we're gonna do both. So I'm just gonna take these out right here.
Okay, we're back. Sorry. Yeah, so we're just gonna put these in here. Once I got them in here, I'm gonna look for any that are deformed or anything. Yeah. Okay. Another thing we do is sausage. So we're gonna move this back out of the way. Now, I'm gonna use two types of sausage today. We're gonna do a fresh pork sausage that's still raw. It's not been smoked, it's been fresh stuffed. And we're gonna use a smoked sausage that's already been, so, so, it's already been smoked. All we gotta do is cook it up. We're gonna chop them up into bite-sized pieces and we should be in great shape. I think we'll be okay because everything is underneath the cover right there. Let me just double check it. I can feel it. Okay, that's why I have the computer. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's push on. Alright, so there is rain coming, so we're gonna knock this out. Because I don't want you guys to miss it. I got this knife from a friend of mine. Caroline's going to help me. As I cut the, uh, the sausage, she's going to put them in this pot. I have never had a knife sharp enough to cut through a whole block of sausage like that in one shot. And it's it's literally sharp enough to cut the entire thing. I'm shocked. <laughs> I've never had a knife sharp enough to do that. Never in my life. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. For a knife to be sharp enough to cut through an entire block of smoked sausage in one shot. Dear God. Okay. Okay. For the fresh sausage, we have to be a little bit more delicate. Turn that over. <laughs> now, if your knife is not sharp, it will pinch and fresh sausage is raw. So if, you're, if your knife is not sharp, it will not go through it. It'll just pinch it down. Look how smooth of a cut that is. Dear God, man. Okay, there's also a bowl of corn. There's a bowl of corn. Okay, let's take those in. Okay. Okay, we're also, we also have, yeah. Um, we use, this is a smoked Cajun sausage. It's mainly pork um, with Cajun spices in it. This is a fresh Cajun sausage, mainly pork with uh, Cajun spices, nothing over the top. Caroline's out here without a sweater, I don't know why. She had a sweater, you took it off, put it back on. All right, so also, for all you vegans out there that don't wanna do the, um, the sausage part, this is pretty easy for you. Mushrooms, 
Um, mushrooms are like God's, um, God's little uh, sponges. They'll soak up all the salt, pepper, spices, and they're amazing. That's the best part. I'm not cutting the. I'm not. Wash that phone. The best part about it is, I was just reminded how quickly I need to cut, how quickly I need to cut my, um, clean my knife after I cut the uh, lemons. The only problem is, I don't cut my lemons. Okay? And there's a reason why I don't cut my lemons. Because of the level, because of the heat and the rough, because of the hard boil and the rapid boil that I use in my crawfish boil, if I cut these lemons, they will disintegrate and their pulp will go everywhere. And normally that's not a bad deal, but it doesn't need to be. There's a way to get around that. We're going to fork the hell out of them. All you got to do, poke them with a fork, go. It keeps the pulp in, lets the juices out, lets the rind and the zest come off, and everyone's good. Okay. Um, Olivia, can you turn it where we're showing that the, um, the, the pot's boiling? And Caroline, can you turn off the water for me? The water, just turn it off. Okay, everyone, just point towards the boiling area. Okay, as you guys can all see, um, the pot has steam coming out. The water is boiling hot. Now we can start adding our stuff, okay? Bring it back to me. Okay, set up the water for boiling. Oh, about one more thing. Corn. I love corn in, in, in my crawfish bowl, however, I'm going to put my corn with my potatoes. Okay, so I have my potatoes and corn in the basket, and I have my sausages, my mushrooms, and my lemons separate and there's a reason why okay when you go to boil things the corn and the potatoes are going to take the longest they're going to take approximately 15 minutes to boil properly mushrooms will boil in about two and a half before they start to disintegrate as will the sausage and everything else so we're just going to add them a little bit at a time did you turn the water off cool awesome all right let's talk about the water Sea salt. You're gonna need a pretty big pack of sea salt. I usually use right at about th uh, between 28 and 36 ounces of sea salt for for uh, for 25 gallons of water. That's gonna go in the water. Please don't mess up my camera port. Thank you. Where does Iceland grow corn? I'm just asking. Okay. Of course you gotta have salt. Okay. Zatarain's crab boil. This is pretty much, and I'm not kidding you, let me read the ingredients. Water, spice extract, extracts of capsaicin, um, and caramel flavor, and extract of paprika. Essentially, they take capsaicin from cayenne peppers and they make it into a... Um, yeah, don't drink this, okay? This, this is your crab bowl. No, 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 no. Rice wine vinegar. Now, I put rice wine vinegar, a whole bottle in my pot before I do my vegetables and crawfish because it does act as a vinegaring agent which helps with separating the shells from the tail meat and it's easier to peel.
This is called a boiling bag. Essentially, it is peppers in a bowl bag. And then after you cook your crawfish, I'll show you guys how to steam using a steaming powder agent. So essentially, depending upon how spicy you want your crawfish, and if I have kids, so I don't go over the top. So, salt, crab boil, rice wine vinegar to start. So Megan's gonna turn the camera, you guys are gonna watch me put that stuff in there. <laughs> no, you got to have a pair of shorts. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Um, the best, the best part of all that was, if you noticed, I I put um, half of each, half the salt, half the uh, oil, and half of the um, um, the vinegar because you can always add, you can always add more. You can never add less, and that's just for the vegetables. We'll add some more when it comes to the crawfish. So let's. I want to get these potatoes and corn in here as soon as possible, so let me go do that. Um, you can turn it back to me. Hey everybody, welcome back. So we put just put our, our corn and our potatoes in. We started the clock. Uh, we're gonna run the clock for about 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna add the sausage. And then after two minutes after I add the sausage, I am then going to add the mushrooms. So yeah. Questions! I know everybody's got questions. Come on. Now's your time to ask questions because I got stuff to do. Um, also, the um, the seafood boil that we put now. The way we're going to do this is, if you ever go to a crawfish boil and somebody boils the crawfish, like they put the crawfish in the pot and they boil them for eight minutes, like they're boiling them, they're going to be hard to peel and they're going to be overdone. Okay, the way that we do this is pretty funny. Um, Crawfish are a shellfish like a lobster, but much smaller, and they're hard shell. So what happens is, um, if you bring a water to a boil, and then you put a coal object in there, like a langocene or a lobster or crawfish for in this case, the water will rapidly cool because you're putting a room temperature item into boiling water. If you apply heat 
and bring that water back up to a boil. Once the water's back up to a boil, that means everything in that pot is at equal temperature, which means all of the crawfish are at a boiling temperature. So why the hell do I need to boil it for another eight minutes? You don't. What I'm going to do is when I put the crawfish in and I crank up the heat, and it, when the water is cooled from putting the crawfish in to the point where it's boiling again, I'm going to cut my heat off. And I'm, once I got those crawfish in the water back to the equal temperature to boil, I'm going to cut the heat off and let them soak. I'll let them soak for five minutes in the hot water and then take them out. If you overboil crawfish, shrimp, langoustine, lobsters, they're disgusting to eat because they're, they're, they're chewy and, and hard to peel. We're going to keep from doing that. We haven't even gotten through our, our sausage and vegetables yet, but I want to make sure you guys watch me when I do that. That's the key to boiling seafood. If you overboil a, a piece of seafood, it, it becomes impalatable. I do know some Shine Down music. Let's do that. Yes, we are still taking song requests. The top 10 requests are guaranteed to be done next week. What a shame. <laughs> Good music. Hey man, Shine Down is is the is the redneck version of um Shine Down who, who, so someone told me this one time. Shine Down is um what's the name of that shitty band? Hang on, who's the name of the shitty band? Canada. The only shitty band ever to come from Canada. Um photograph and um Oh, 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 Nickelback. Nickelback, yes! Shine Down is Nickelback for rednecks, that's what I've been told. I don't think it's true. Thank you, it is. No, pug, uh, pug, if you want crawfish, come your ass to Lafayette. You know better than that. No, um, this one is a smoked sausage. Let me show you the difference. Okay, one is fresh. It's been fresh case packed, but it hasn't been smoked yet. And the other one has been smoked. But they're both Cajun sausage. It's it's essentially um, boudin would be um, the difference between this sausage and boudin is boudin has more rice in it. It's a rice mixture. William Shatner. Oh my God! Please don't do that. See, Megan is now doing the whole, um, she's giving the uh, crawfish their last rites. Uh, you know. <laughs> Christopher, you got it, buddy. It's on the list. Uh, please react to Moomy, Nothing Else Matters, Pan Pan Cover. I'm assuming that's, yeah, that'll be fun. Oh, also, here's another one for you. Why would I put one uncooked sausage and one cooked? Okay, here's the thing. This sausage is smoked, but it's still raw. You wouldn't eat this like this, okay? It's smoked, but it's not smoked cooked. They also taste different. It, one has a smoky flavor. One has a fresh sausage flavor. They do taste different. That's why. Oh, and the most important reason why I do it is because I can. Yeah, Tech Zombie's like, why would you do that? Uh, because I can. No, AZ? What the hell? Start with Bioshock? Hey, if we start getting into a word called Bioshock, we're going to bring my daughter into this. Megan's so into Bioshock, it hurts. Do 
I just dropped the lemons in. Gunmunder Arnar Gunderson says, please react to one more Eurovision song. Fuck! Um, Johanna, it is true, Iceland, 2009. Damn it. All right, I do it because I love you. Waiting for some new ginger? Me too. Hey, um, William, did you know that ginger's in? They're in the, um, they're in the studio right now. Ginzu! Hey, old school drum nerd. Dan Preslin, Neoblascarius, Icicles Fall drum playthrough. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, Cause I did uh, Ne uh, uh, Oblivascarius this last week. And it, dude, I thought he was gonna get his drum set off the ground. Whoa, really? Wait, hold on. Iceland got second place in 2009? Then why the fuck did Will Ferrell make a movie about them sucking? I know, Gunmunder with Eurovision and Dungeons and Dragons. Two things that confuse me, yet I think they're amazing. Yes, actually, um, hey Michael, this is how much I know about the Ginger Tour. December 5th, December 5th, New Orleans. House of Blues, December 5th. Yes, I already knew. <laughs> I, I saw your post and I grabbed it. It does. Y'all could smell. Yeah, if we had, I wish we had smell a vision instead of stream. It's really good. Bioshock Decay, Noisy shows the band having a ton of fun and making each other laugh. Yes! I want to do that. October 24th? Hey, Mike, that's the day before my birthday, bro. So enjoy that show in honor of me. Yes. Actually, if you go to Ginger's YouTube page, which I go every day, they actually post little videos of uh, parts that they're doing in the, uh, in, the, in the studio now. They're doing little updates, which is really awesome. Definitely want to check it out. All right, guys, sausage time. Go ahead and turn the uh, camera for me. If you don't mind. Mutilated Tyrant. Okay, and I'm not going to say... See, Anthax is doing this shit on purpose. It's Navajo music, Navajo metal. So it's the Navajo language, which is so complex and unknown that we used it as a way to confuse the Japanese in World War II. So no, I'm not going to say that, but it says birth to old, so we're going to go with that. Yes, I did see that. Um, I saw that the Sick and Beautiful is doing a free live stream concert in May. I did. Hey, I ha I've had three people privately message me going, old school, why are you reacting to such, like, unknown shit? And I'm like, because my, my community is amazing, that's why. <laughs> I like the unknown stuff. Let's do this band backwards. Last song they ever did. It's the last song of their last album. Played as the last song of their last ever... Jesus, a lot of last. Sentenced, end of the road, mourn credits, burned alive. Wow. That's a lot of ending, bro. You got it, Eunice. Hey, hey, Eunice. Um, have you heard from the Bad Alpers lately? I know they're in the studio, right? <laughs> it's sausage time will be added to your catalog. Yes, it will. Okay, so we're about um, about three or four minutes from putting the mushrooms in. I need that pot rinsed out. Yeah, and then there's also another big one in the um, in the.
Big gumbo pot, I need that one too. I didn't have to be washed, it just has to be brought out. Yeah, Dan Priestland is awesome. I did, I loved that. I loved it. Okay, let's talk about boiling the crawfish. Once we get the, um, the potatoes, and the, now the mushrooms and the potatoes are gonna absorb a lot of the salt. Okay, and um, see, the mushrooms and the potatoes are gonna absorb a lot of the salt, a lot of the spices. So once we do that, we're gonna re-add spices to the water for the crawfish. Now, there's this stuff right here called shake, okay? And you can buy it almost everywhere. It's, it's a Cajun boil mix. Now, most people will put this in the boiling water. I don't do that. And the reason why I don't do that is because it really doesn't do anything for you. There's a trick to it, and I'm gonna show you what the trick is. Once you get the crawfish boiled, and you get them um, cooked all the way through, you let them soak, then you take them out of the water and you put them in an ice chest with the lid. While they're in the ice chest with the lid, you sprinkle this on the top. They will continue to steam inside that ice chest. While they're in the ice chest, and this stuff goes on the outside. Yeah. Just, just go, go easy and take your time. Damn it! I knew that shit was gonna happen. Okay, so crates. I knew it was going to happen. Somebody was going to make me do Lady Baby. I knew it was going to happen. I've been trying to avoid that one as much as possible, but now i got to do it. Damn it. He creeps me out, man. I mean, I know it's his art, but he creeps me out. Um, That's kind of my side yard towards my neighbor. My backyard is a field that goes uh, uh, eight acres that way. And I have a cow pasture across the street. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to go check the potatoes now. I'll be right back. What you're going to do is since the potatoes take the longest to cook of anything, we go and we uh, check them. Take one out, see if it's soft. All right, I'm gonna go check that real quick. Be right back, guys. It's all good, man. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Okay, everybody. It's mushroom time. Just had Megan go in and spray them off. But make sure they're nice and clean. It's time to put those in. Hey, Libby. How's it going? Can you do me a favor and put this in? Awesome. Thank you so much. One more thing I need you to get. Yes. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Um, when you're looking for anything to boil crawfish with, I'm going to give you guys some ideas. Um, um, let me hook you up. 
Hold on. Okay, once you've drained, okay, you got a very good point, okay, Tech Zombie. After you purge them and then you rinse them, then you put them in the basket, okay? Right now, we haven't gotten to that part. We're going to do that after we do the, yeah. So right now, if we go, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to pan, um, Olivia's going to pan the camera over where the purge bin is. The purge bin is now being drained. Go ahead and turn it to the purge bin. Okay, the purge bin has been drained. Turn the camera. There you go. Watch it. Okay, so you can see the ice chest where the purging was done. The, the, the block has been pulled out, so it's drained out. Now they're just sitting out. They're going to be rinsed, and we're going to put them in the basket to rinse them. That way you know they're going to be nice and clean. That'll help you out. But right now, I've turned the camera over because it's now time to get some of our stuff out. Ready? Here we go.
Um, here in a, in a few seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna do this first. I already put it up. Bring the camera back. Around. Hey, everybody! So here we go. Potatoes, smoke sausage, fresh sausage, and of course, let me find one because they floated to the top. Mushroom on the ground. Okay. Aww. Damn. It was a tiny one, so it'll be fine. Got our corn. And our lemons in this one. I put the corn lemons to the side because people don't like to have to try to dig through all the, the um try to dig through everything to get to the corn. Now the drawer of the um of the refrigerator. Butter. One stick of butter. Bring two if you can find them. Okay, so now we're now going to go add the rest of our salt. Hey, hey! Helsinki feeling here. Wait, whoa, whoa. Did I miss something from Kinzu? Hold on. That's 100% true. Welcome in everyone from everywhere, your family when you're in this, in this world. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do it a little bit different. Perfect. Not. Now, once we start getting ready to do the crawfish, we're going to add butter to the mix. Add the rest of our crab boil. We're going to add the rest of our salt. Now, here's the kicker. You can oversalt this stuff if you're not careful. So, I'm going to do the crawfish in two batches, okay? We have two sacks, two batches per sack. So, I'm going to add half the crawfish to the basket. The less crawfish you boil at a time, or any seafood, the less impact it has on the water going low and getting high, and you can cook them better. Let's do this. We're going to add our butter, two sticks of butter. I'm going to add one stick now. One stick for the second sack when we start doing the second sack. I'm going to add a little bit of the vinegar, half of what's left of this, half of what's left of that. If you don't portion this out, what will wind up happening is your first batch will be so hot that your second batch will taste bland or vice versa. So, go easy. But I'm going to go put this butter in there now. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got food in my tongue. Well, not yet, but I'm going to work on it. I'm going to set the crawfish up. Now, we're now going to start um, setting up the crawfish to boil. What's going to happen is uh, Olivia's going to turn the camera. All of you can see, okay, favor, click the big gray area to the left. big gray area to the left. up top, up top, up oh, there you go, that, that big guy, yeah, click that, okay, so now you can see the camera, okay, you're going to turn the camera over there, and so hold on, uh, before you do that, 
Megan and I are going to go over. We're going to put the crawfish in the basket. Do the final rinse before we put them in, okay? I won't be able to talk to you during it, but we're just going to play that as a game, okay? And um, watch how much we put in. Um, it's going to be about a half a cage. Ready? Ready or not? Let's go. <laughs> not really what we're going to do. Um, one of the keys to what we're going to do now, taking them out properly. So, and Megan's going to fire on the crawfish. Wait, the water comes up to a bowl. So we're going to get on this. There you go. All the way on, man. Okay, everybody. Um, this is a pretty good. Hey, this is a pretty good angle, Olivia. They can see me and the thing. Okay, guys. So here's the plan. Um, um, click the thing because I don't know if they can even see me. Wait. Do me a favor. Turn that speaker down a little bit. No, 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 no. The bottom. No, no, no. Get off of that stuff. Go up and get off of that shit. Okay. The bottom. The bottom. Look at me. The graphs. See the one with the microphone? There's a slider. Go to the right. To the right. To the right. Your other right. <laughs> Keep going right. Right, 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 right. There. Bring that down a little bit. Perfect. Keep going. Yes. Perfect. Let's do that. Okay. Now go back up to the, uh, push the other one. Um, that. That. Perfect. Okay, can you hear me now? Um, no, actually, um, crawfish are freshwater. So unlike, okay, um, the, the closest thing I can do to describe to them is like a langocene. Okay. For those of you in Europe, like a langocene. However, langocene are deep water ocean, salt water. So their diet's very, very pure. Crawfish live in the mud. Okay, Anthax, I will do that one. However, I don't even know how to say it. I see the word troll. And when it's you and trolls, I get it. <laughs> Thank you so much, buddy. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so right now we're, we're just rinsing everything down. We rinsed everything. We're bringing the water up to a hot bowl so we can drop everything in. Well, it's going to happen. Okay, so the reason why crawfish have such a unique taste is because they're found mainly in the swamps and in rice fields. So their, their diet is pretty much rice stalks and rice shucks, and they live in the mud, so they have a very rich, fatty flavor. Very fatty. 
Awesome. All right, so you see the steam on the pot, so the water's ready to go. Let's drop these bad boys in. Someone set me a timer. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes for my uh, pot to get back to boiling. Anyway, uh, well, I have no idea. That's what I said. It means spellbound. Oh. It's like a different language. You think? The O's have like lines through them and shit. There's yeah. dots and shit above vowels and little pyramids and shit. It's damn near Egyptian for me. Accents. <laughs> oh, Megan, I love my daughter. She's like. Maybe it's in another language. You think? No, no shit, Charlie. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to do that one. Nice. All right. So you guys are on the lookout for steam. When you guys... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Hey, Andre, that's a great idea. I need one of you guys to uh, take the word old school nerd and and get a translation in whatever language that is with all the accents and everything and we'll literally put that old school nerd in that language with all the accents and everything and then that exact that's a perfect shirt it's like a different language everyone <laughs> i love that Okay, so now that we have the crawfish in the pot, yeah, um, yeah, so the crawfish are in the pot, they're coming up to, to temperature. Now, once we get them cooked, we're gonna remove them from, from the heat, we're gonna turn the heat down so it's not as loud, and we're gonna put them in that ice chest I just opened up. Once they're in the ice chest, we're gonna add this sprinkle stuff, uh, this the spice, spice mix powder, to steam them. And we're going to mix them up, move them off to the side. Once they cool off just a little bit, then Megan and I are going to do a little crawfish peeling contest for all of you. We're going to first do one where we peel one for you guys to see. Then it's going to be her and I side by side. We're going to go for it. Um, and after we do that, that'll be the end of the stream for this week. The only reason why we're ending stream is because I have another sack and a half to cook. And I've got family coming. And, um, and we need to eat. And we also need to eat, so. It's a, it's a full on Cause, job. Because if you don't eat while they're hot, you're wasting your effort. Vladimir Poopin. Now, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but some of you in this channel right now, and Chelsea and I, are working on a very special project coming up in the next couple weeks. And it may actually be another weekly thing. And it may be kind of fun. We're working on figuring out how to do it, but if we can pull it off, you get to see some of these amazing people that you see in the chat room in ways you've never seen them before. And uh, I may, I, and it might even be possible someone may super chat me and I may stab someone in the face and ruin their night. <laughs> I'm sorry. You'll figure it out later. I promise I'll tell you more details next week.
Oh my god, it's quiet again. <laughs> okay, everyone. Now they are, um, the water has come up to a boil. The water is rapidly boiling. And that means that the entire water of the entire pot is the same temperature. Now we have two choices. We can either keep the water boiling rapidly, using heat after heat after heat into the crawfish, making them very hard to peel. Let, let you eat. Making them very hard to peel and deal with. Or we can let them soak at the current temperature, let them finish cooking, and they'll be perfect. What does Thomas from Nightwish have to do with Uncle Scrooge from Donald Duck's comics? It's, um, okay. Maybe it's time to find out. Thomas, hello, lifetime. Lifetime of adventure. Okay. By the way, that's Scrooge McDuck, by the way. Scrooge McDuck. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's funny because Scrooge McDuck was originally not a uh, Donald Duck character until they did um, Dis uh, Mickey's Christmas uh, Carol, where, um, they, yeah, where they actually created the character of Uncle Scrooge McDuck to be uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Then he was so popular, they actually uh, put him as Moneybags Scrooge McDuck for DuckTales. Now, does anyone know the name of the who, um, it's the same voice and everything, but he was not Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, before Scrooge, Uncle Scrooge McDuck was created, the same character was a different person in the Disney universe. He was actually a professor. And so when they would do these little uh, vignettes uh, about all the things that are for sciences and stuff, or uh, Epcot stuff, or Tomorrowland, he would come out in a, in a laboratory jacket as a professor, and he would tell everyone about that stuff. Leo does the DuckTales cover. Yes, he does. He does do one. I need to do that one, too. Really close to crawfish time, everybody. Woohoo! Okay. Make this happen. That's correct. Our limits. All right, everybody. It's crawfish time. Yes! Ludwig von Drake. Very good. Kelsey's so amazing. Dawn of Ages. That needs to happen. Yes, it does. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna show everyone how we.
Chuck Dodgers and the 24th and a half century. See, it's hard to deal with me, man. I'm all about that. Got plenty. All right, everyone, this is how this is going to work. I have 10 crawfish here. I have an extra one to show you how we peel them. Megan is going to have hers. Oh, yes. Ooh, thank you very much. We totally forgot about the dip. Okay. Now, a common staple, especially for Cajun crawfish bowls, is the sauce. Now, the dipping sauce is usually made, traditionally, it's usually made with two ingredients, which is ketchup and mayo, mayonnaise. Now, ketchup and mayonnaise, put, I'd go by 50-50 and mix them in until you get a consistency like this. Some people like it a little bit more red. Some people like it a little bit more white. Depending upon how much mayo versus ketchup you put will determine. Now, here's the key. After you get your mix like this, what you add to it will determine your type of sauce. Everyone can, I've seen people put sauerkraut. I've seen people put Tabasco sauce. I've seen people put jalapenos. I've seen people put all kinds of stuff in it. It's up to you. All right, Eunice, have a good one, man. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Hey, sit, hey Michael, it is fry sauce, but it's but we've been using it for, oh, I don't know, 50 years. I love my daughter. I love her. Going down. Okay, let me show you how this works. Take a crawfish. Now, if you want to, if the claws are big enough, you can pop the claws off. Eat claw meat. Totally, totally fine. You take the crawfish, take the head, twist, and pull away. This, you can save for other things. Okay. Now, fat, body, similar to a lobster, you can take either the first or the second plate off, pinch the bottom, and pull away. Here's your crawfish tail. Now, if you've purged them, there won't be any poop shoot there, <laughs> but sometimes there is. I'm gonna eat them. Now, the contest is kill them. But I'm gonna eat mine too because I can't help myself. Also, once you take the tail off, if they're cooked properly, you can go inside the head and take the fat out. That's and that shit is so good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we. Don't mess with my poop shoot. Don't mess with my poop. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> 10 crawfish. If a tail breaks, you got to get all the way through it. Half tails don't count. What we're talking about is if you're peeling this, if you're peeling the tail and it yeah. breaks in half, you got to get both both halves out. Ready? On your marks, get set.
I got a broken tail. I got a broken tail. That didn't last long. Stop! That's my motherfucker. I'm helping you. All right, everybody. That's how that works. <laughs> I've done it at least. <laughs> I love you. Wait. Yeah, I've done this a few times. Um, you know how you know your dad is really good at eating anything? Bruh. Look at my trophy rack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, everybody. Okay, yeah, but the ones you have in Sweden are Langacine. These are crawfish; they're a little different. Langacine are amazing, by the way. What's really funny is we actually shipped some stuff up. I was in Aberdeen, Scotland, a while back, years ago, and I actually shipped this stuff to Scotland. And we brought in some langacine, and I Cajun boiled those bad boys, and it was so damn good. <laughs> so damn good. Okay, so these were just 10. We normally eat about 5 to 10 pounds each. We'll eat all day. Yeah, the only thing that'll stop you is the cost. All right. Okay, everybody. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. We love you. Thank you so much for coming in today. We're going to get all these reviews done this week. Thank you so much. Um, next Sunday, we may be talking about something new that's coming out next week. But some of us doing something special. I don't know. We'll do something with all of you guys. They're really good, actually. They're really good. Right. She's not talking because they're too good. We love you guys. Thank you so much for coming in. We're glad the rain held off, but it looks like it's coming. So we got to get all the computer and stuff and camera and everything back inside the house. Um, actually, if um, any time between now and mid-June, we can do a crawfish bowl. It's not hard. It's easy to get them. So well, if you're going to fly... I've been trying to get Vlad to drive his ass over here from Florida, but that's kind of a long way to go for food. No, you're going to eat them all day. Got it, Ryan. All right, guys, we love you. Thank you so much for coming out. I got to get cooking and um, uh, less talky, more cookie, right? Yeah. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.